my son gave me a call, said, can you help me get out of bunkers? So I said, okay, let's go up and do a short game session. So we're starting with the very basic setup for a little pitching wedge chip and run. Standing a little open, weight on the left side, ball back, and a very simple type of putting stroke, really, to get the ball moving forwards. Now there's some wind noise on the next section, and you'll see why. Standing open, ball a little back. Sweet. So he cans his very first effort. You can't make it up, can you? So we're just going through the basic routine of rolling the ball up the green with a pitching wedge. And in a moment, I'm going to swap him for an eight iron. And all I'm going to ask him to do is exactly the same thing. Ball a little back, feet a little open, a very short stroke. And this time with the A time to roll it up onto the top tier there. Now the A time shot is very, very useful. You can use it from 30 or 40 yards off the green if there's nothing between you and the green. And as a beginner golfer, and he's got a handicap index of 29.4, which gives him 33 strokes round Lillybrook. As a beginner golfer, you really do need to keep things simple. And the simpler you make it, the easier it is to learn. Can you imagine taking your most lofted club and attempting to fly this ball up onto that top tier about 30 yards away, 25, 30 yards away? It's very difficult. And as a beginner, of course, you don't know what to do, nor do you know where to aim. None of these things come naturally to you, so you have to be taught. That one's a little shoved to the right. Let's have a look to see how he's set up. So just like with aiming with your driver or any other club, and even when you're practicing like this, Go and stand behind the ball and look at your target and pick something to hit over. As it happens, we've got a divot. So even with the shortest of shots, you've got to take as much care over aiming as you would with your driver. Well, the next place I took him to was a simple chip over the bunker. Nice. Now, my lad has only got some hand-me-down wedges, so all he's got is a 52 and a 60. And the 60 in the hands of a beginner is a very difficult club to use because it doesn't have any bounce. And when you're chipping over a bunker, it's usually because you're in the rough. And if you're in the rough, you've got some daylight between the bottom of the ball and the ground. And for that, you need a sand wedge. And the reason you need a sand wedge is for the same reason you need a sand wedge to get out of a bunker. It's called the bounce. And with a 60, you do need to hit the ball hard. 
it's surprising how much of a swing you need to hit a 60 out of fluffy rough and up onto a green. And that's why it's so much harder to learn than perhaps with a sand wedge with a bit of bounce. And of course, again, aiming doesn't come naturally. Now, one of the most important things is that this club head stays in front of you and it doesn't go around your backside. As soon as it goes around your backside, you've had it. So let's see how we can do with a little bit of instruction from the old man. So everything's a little bit open. That club face comes back towards me. Now you need a bit more speed. Now that isn't the prettiest action in the world. But then again, he is an absolute beginner. You need that little bit more speed. And anything that gets the ball over this bunker and onto the green and you get rid of the fear of bunkers. Get rid of any fear that That's what you got to do. Find a way of getting this ball onto the dance floor. And we got it. As I say, it's not pretty yet. Doesn't matter where it goes. But it's very, very effective. Get it on the green. When you can get a tube full on that green, then you can start thinking about. How I'll go for the short flag, I'll go for that long one. Yeah. For the moment, get it on the green. You're sort of like opening and now, of course, the whole point of this video, getting my son out of a bunker. So we're talking about aim, the fact that you open the face a fraction, you don't overdo it. We've drawn a line in the sand towards the flag that we're going at and we stand open to that and we want that shallow swing not that steep swing we don't want to dig in so you get your feet in for stability the ball's forward in the stance and we're going to slap that sand a couple of inches behind the ball And you'll note that that is quite an aggressive swing for not going very far. So always tidy up the bunker between two or three shots. No point giving yourself bad lies. And what you're about to see is the downside of not owning a sandwich. This is his 60. 60 has got a very sharp leading edge and not very much bounce. So it's not the ideal club unless your name is Luke Donald. And I don't know many people who are called Luke Donald. So the result is almost inevitable. Especially as the sand in this practice bunker is not evenly distributed. So we've, we've found a bit where there's no sand at all. So we're going to move around a bit to somewhere where we can perhaps find a little more sand. And this, again, will show you the downside of using a 60. And it's surprising how hard you've got to hit the ball. This is another thing that beginner golfers have got to learn. That getting out of a bunker requires some effort because you're not actually hitting the ball there's a huge cushion of sand between your club head and the ball so you need more speed and more aggression and the 60 fails us again so i think it's time to swap clubs Just going to walk around and check the ball position and check the setup. But I don't think that is the issue, as I've said. The 60 digs in, there's no bounce, there's no forward momentum. 
you've had it. So, here's my sand wedge. Have a go with that. Now he's going to buy a set of wedges. I think he's going to go for the Kirkland ones because they're they're roughly £150 for three wedges. And it will also solve the gap in his bag between the 52 and the 60. First go with a sand wedge ever. And straight onto the green. So I set a little challenge, get these four out, and I'll buy you a pint. So, number one. Little bit low, got a little bit too much ball on that one, but it's out. And this is the thing, as a beginner golfer, somebody with 33 strokes, all you want is out. So if you get your setup right, you've got the right club in your hand, you've got enough speed and acceleration, you're getting it out. Number three, come on, let's get number three out. And I think that was a particularly deep bit of sand. So the last thing I demonstrated was the plugged. So we thump it into the deep bit. With the plugged one, we go in with a straight face. Thing with a straight face is we do want the leading edge to dig in. Just how look, how much effort I put into this and how much sand I remove. Cheerio then. Not bad for an old man.